and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a little bit different, not in terms of the artwork, but in terms of my filming. I'm currently in my old studio um, where I've been filming for years and I am fully packed up. There's just this desk out with these last little bits here. Um, so I there's been a little bit of an issue with our new house that we've bought. So we will be living in temporary accommodation with my brother for a couple of weeks. Uh, potentially up to a month we don't know yet um so i will not have a, a dedicated filming setup and so the quality or the lighting may not be as good as usual um not saying that it's ever great but <laughs> it's better than it probably will be for the next few clips of this video but i'm hoping we will be in the new house in a in a few weeks and you know i'll finish this video off there so please bear with me with those clips and maybe the couple of videos might be you know lesser quality but i hope not i will try my best um but on to what we are doing in this video so i will potentially be having some of my artwork for sale in an online gallery i won't mention which gallery just in case it doesn't pan out or i can't say anything until it's up there but I wanted to produce a bit of original artwork to be sold in that gallery and so I thought I would do some of my ink work. Um, so as, if you've been watching the channel for a little while you know that I use this beautiful Bartoletti glass dip pen and it is wonderful, it's heavy, it's really fine point, it's very smooth to work with. highly recommend getting one if you want to use a glass dip pen um, but definitely try a glass dip pen out before. However, this is far superior you won't get a scratchy point when you are working it will be very smooth but highly recommend so i'll be using my glass dip pen i will be using bortoletti ink which is lovely it flows off the glass dip pen really well i can't seem to find any other ink that flows on the dip pen quite as nice as this bortoletti ink so that's why i tend to stick with this i will be using some reference images i will link where i got them from and the photographer down in the description below but i found the photographer kind of had these three wild cat images which i loved and i wanted to experiment with using a lot more dark in my ink work so the size i wanted to make these was a3 as the originals however i'm a little bit scared about my idea of making a dark background with the ink and um, probably applying with a brush or something like that so i I kind of thought let's try it on an A5 first so that's what this video is going to be about it's me trying the A5 and then I'll produce videos as a series where I do my bigger larger inkings um, and you can see see me doing those but for now we are going to try an A5 size just to be safe just to make sure my idea is good before I spend hours and hours doing an A3 size so that's what the video is about we will be using my Cardi paper so this is handmade paper um, 320 gsm so it's very thick it absorbs the ink really nicely but without bleeding i always use this paper so we're going to tear this down to an a5 size so that i can test this and that's basically what we're going to do in this video so i hope you stick around and watch and let me know your thoughts and i will do some voiceover and a little thought section at the end and um, but let's get into it
started off using the grid method, which I've done in quite a few videos before. I think I have a very, very old tutorial back when I was first posting videos to this YouTube channel, so you can probably go and laugh at that because it's probably got terrible audio, etc. So do let me know in the comments down below if you want me to film a more updated version, but it's a pretty simple concept. Um, you draw a grid on your reference photo and then you draw a small or large grid on your um, piece of paper and it allows you to either upscale, downscale um, or keep the same um, scale for the drawing and just basically it, it just breaks the drawing down into shapes a little bit more and you can replicate that um, reference image a bit better and I, I swear by it, I think it's a perfect, um, a perfect little way of sketching out your drawings. Um, and then I just go straight in with my dip pen. Um, the dip pen has had a bit of a casualty um, <laughs> during the move and it wasn't even because I packed it badly or something like that. I was trying to protect the, um, the pen a little bit more and secure it in its box and so I thought I'd use a bit of blue tack to secure it and annoyingly as I was doing it I knew it was a bad idea and I pressed on the end, um, luckily not the tip, so um, the actual workings of the pen are intact but the end um, has snapped. <laughs> um, so unfortunately I will be looking at getting a new one. It hasn't, like I say, it hasn't um, damaged the workings of the pen um, so I can still use it for inking for now but um, what a sad sad day it was. <laughs> um, but yes, I managed to finish this inking before that happened which is good um, and I finished it uh, earlier than I thought. I thought I'd be finishing this in the new house whenever we move that in but I managed to finish it before we even moved out of the house. Um, so that's good. Um, anyway, back onto the inking. I, I thought this was going to be more difficult because I find when I work smaller with my inkings it actually, I can't get the detail quite as much. But I found that I actually, I could get the detail quite well and um, actually I had to think a little bit more since I was making this very stark black background. I had to think a little bit more about the negative space and how I would make these whiskers pop. Um, because usually when I ink uh, pet portraits, for example, if I have a lot of whiskers, I would just do a black line for the whisker, um, unless the dog is very dark and then I would have to think about the negative space a little bit more then. But um, with this I had to think I need to create a white whisker so I almost outlined a whisker shape and then when I come back in with my inking I can just go around those lines almost like I'm colouring in. Um, so it, I had to have a lot of more thought on that and a little bit more um, consideration as I was inking which proved not too difficult um, but it did take a lot more thought than usual. Um, but yes I I very much enjoyed this and like I say it, it wasn't as slow going as I thought. I'm still I'm still kind of debating whether I need to do an A3 of this. Um, I'm not sure it will translate to A3. I think it looks great on A5 but will it look just as good if I blow it up to an A3 size? So please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Um, but I think this is a good thing, a good, a good inking and um, whether I sell this in the gallery or I sell it on my personal website, I'm not sure yet. Um, but I probably will be making prints of these and I will be selling the original at some point. So if you are interested in that, please keep your ears to the ground. Um, like I say, I'm doing a little series of these, so I will probably release them all at once. But this is your pre-warning that this will be an original um, and prints at some point. Um, probably when we're in the new house and I'm not as stressed out <laughs> um, and I can have a think and order things to a, a more permanent address etc but um, yeah I'm gonna let you watch the rest of this inking and um, there's no point me telling you anymore because it is just me using the same pen um, and I will catch up with you kind of towards the end when we get on to inking the background
Right, I've just finished inking and I'm a bit scared. I'm a bit scared. So what I've done is I took a photo of my inking here and I thought I'd put it into Procreate and I would play around with whether I want to add a black background. Now, I'd like to have a bit of a raw edge here. I'm probably not gonna have it as straight. It's gonna be a bit more washy. Um, this black, black background might not be quite so black. But this is kind of the vibe I'm going for. I think I think it'll make it pop. I think it'll look really good. Now, I'm just really scared. Really scared. This inking's turned out really nicely. But it is a practice. That's the reason I've done this. So I did also play around with potentially adding a little bit of colour. But I'm not sure about that. I think I'm going to go with the black background. Well, I'm going to have a think anyway. I'm, I thought I'd show you. I'm going to have a little think. And then in the next clip, you'll see whether I decide to do it or not. Um, but I'm going to go away and have a little think for tonight and see what I want to do. So I decided instead of using my dip pen or a paintbrush with my Bortoletti ink, I thought I would use this um, Pentel Fuday pen. I think I received it in a scroller box many, many years ago, so I can't even remember what scroller box, what year or anything like that, but I use this quite often to do black backgrounds. It's just a really stark, dark black and it's permanent ink, so I thought that would be the best for this um, very heavy ink work just in case any water did run on it um, but I do spray my artworks at the end anyway just to be sure that they will not run with water um, and I and it's got a real brush nib so I could actually go in there and almost add brush strokes to mimic the fur along the edges which was perfect for this and also it runs quite dry if you run it quite quickly and I thought that would add a really beautiful border because I didn't want it to just be a square border because I could just add that post <laughs> post artwork on um, you know Photoshop and I just wanted it to look way more naturally done way more um, thought through than just adding it on after in Photoshop so um, I thought it turned out quite well the ink pen did perfectly I think it added to the fur and I think it makes the tiger pop and that's what I was wanting and I'm really glad that I pushed ahead and did that in the end so um, please let me know if you enjoyed that but anyway that is it for this video. I, please, I hope you've enjoyed. Please leave a thumbs up if you have. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I would much appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.